Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. We do not own the rights to this music. We do not own the rights to this music. We do not own the rights to this music. We are not the producer. We're not the songwriter. Nor we the songstress that is. But this is Hezekiah Walker. God favored me. Good evening. We do not own the rights to this music. But I do own the right to God's favor. God favored me. Good evening, Sister Golf. God bless you. How many know God favored me? Is that your testimony tonight? God favored you. Good evening. Welcome to New Bethel Missionary Baptist Church Bible study. I'm not even going to say an hour because we're not here that long. But I'll say Bible study empowerment. Amen. It's so good to be back tonight. Amen. We've been gone for a while. And certainly we are grateful to be back uh, in service tonight. Thank God for his favor. Thank God for his grace and mercy. Uh, thank God for allowing us to make it from Sunday to a Wednesday. God is so good. He is so kind. He is so gracious. And so tonight we are grateful to be here tonight. Amen. Be able to study God's word. Songwriter said, God, favor me. Anybody know they got the favor of God on their life? We thank God. We love God because he first loved us. And so tonight, 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 I'm just trying to give those a time to come on. Amen. We are so gracious that God gave us this opportunity and he's given us this platform to be able to reach out and let everyone know about his grace, his mercy, his favor, his love and kindness. And so we are grateful tonight. Amen. And so tonight, as it is, we are grateful to be here. Thank God for allowing us this opportunity. And, and let me say this before I move. I want to thank Sister Gall and the women of New Bethel for an outstanding job, amen, uh, on this past Sunday, our Women's Day. A phenomenal job, amen. A great worship experience, dynamic speaker, amen. Uh, I can't be more gracious than what I am right now, just to tell you, I thank God for you ladies, amen. But the men are coming. Amen. So as T.D. Jakes used to say, get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen. Uh, we are coming. Our time is coming. Amen. Uh, tonight, tonight, I want to talk about the favor of God. Amen. Lord, drop that in my spirit today uh, as a topic to deal with the favor of God. We use this word so often around the body of Christ and uh, a lot of times we don't really know what the favor of God is. Amen. And, 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 and we sometimes look at people that we perceive as being blessed and favored by God who don't really even know God the way that we know God. And so I want to uh, kind of just, if I can get there, amen, shed a little light on that as well. 
But I want to talk about the favor. Let's have a quick word of prayer. And then after that, on the other side, we're going to pick up on this topic, the favor of God. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We give you honor and glory tonight. God, we thank you for your kindness, God, towards us. God, we thank you for all your benefits, God. And we ask tonight, Lord, that you would just have thy way. Father, speak, Holy Spirit, that we may lead better than how we came. Father, it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And we all say, thank you. The favor of God. Amen. Somebody type favor of God. The favor of God. Now, my question that I have tonight is, does God have favorites? Amen. Y'all know how we are. We have our favorite auntie, our favorite uncle, nieces, nephews, cousins. We have our, our favorite. I've been called uh, my favorite pastor. And, 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 and I accept that because uh, I'm your only pastor. So I should be your favorite. God bless you. But, but we have favorites. Does God have favorites? Because when we look at the scripture and let's go to scripture tonight. Amen. Uh, let's go to Acts chapter 10, verse 34. Uh, when we're talking about does God have favorites? Because we look at what the Bible says. Amen. Uh, and sometimes it's hard for us to accept that God favors individuals, Sister Smith and Sister Williams. So, so uh, Acts 10, 34 says it like this, and I'm reading from the New English translation. It says, uh, let me get there. It says, then Peter starts speaking. Now, I truly understand that God does not show favoritism in dealing with people. Verse 35 says, but in every nation, the person who fears him and does what's right is welcome before him. Uh, P Peter draws a great picture because, uh, in fact, he's letting us know that God doesn't have favoritism when it comes to salvation. Mm. All right, y'all. Y'all stay with me tonight, and I'm going to try to get through this thing. Let, let, let's look at Romans chapter two, and we're going to move a little further because I'm trying to set it up. Romans chapter two, watch this, verse 11. Let's go there real quick. It says, for there is no partiality with God. Now, uh, the context refers to God's impartiality when it comes to, watch this, saving both Jews and, and, and the Greek. Amen. He is impartial when it comes to salvation. Amen. And, and so that's why 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 talks about the fact that uh, it is his desire for none to perish. God doesn't want to lose one soul. And so uh, God is patient with us. Amen. Because he wants everyone to be saved. We, we know everybody ain't going to heaven. And I know ain't, 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 a, ain't, ain't the best English word to use, but everybody is not going to make it into heaven. But here it is. We see Peter uh, talks in Acts and, Rome, and Paul writes in Rome that there is no partiality in God. In fact, uh, the King James says there is no respective person. Amen. In Acts uh, 10 and 34, the respecter is to show uh, favoritism. That word respect the person. God is impartial, which means the word impartial means God is fair and just. Amen. Y'all stay with me. Don't 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 turn the tank. Don't change the channel. And watch this. So the Bible does not teach everyone should be treated the same, but the Bible teaches us, watch this, stay with me now, don't, 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 everyone should be treated identically according to a divine standard or principle. So in other words, God holds all of us to the same standard. When it comes to his word, he holds not just the pastor, but he holds also up the nurse, amen, the nurses and and the ushers and the deacons and the choir members, amen. He holds, yeah, 
those who run the audio, those, 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 those who are just in the, he holds all of us to the same standard. Mm. Amen. So, so the word favor, this, 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 because I, I love uh, to preach and talk about the favor of God, because a favor is to watch this, is to feel or show approval or preference for. So, so in other words, even though God doesn't have favorites from the standpoint that we perceive favorites, God does have those that uh, that get close to him that he loves to bless. Let me let me just put it like that. God, God, God has the ones that who have, yeah, who have gained his heart. Amen, somebody. When you gain God's heart, you, you can gain God's hand. And whatever is in God's hand, amen, it is the blessings that God pour out over your life. I wish I had just one person that would help me tonight. So favor is to feel or show approval mm, or reference for. So, so in other words, when you look at it, Sister Maude, favor and grace looks a lot alike. Oh, God, I bless you. Because grace is God's unmerited favor. It's, it's something that we don't deserve, but yet God gives it to us on a daily basis. And favor is something that we, y'all ain't gonna help me. Then. Favor, Sister Fisher, is something that we don't deserve, but God gives it to us anyhow because he loves us that much. That's what God's love looks like, his favor. Hey, God, I bless your wonderful name. So this morning, we were having a discussion on the prayer line with the family and uh, the topic dealt with uh, people were talking about luck. And we understand that as children of God, we don't deal with luck. No, 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 no. We don't, we don't deal with luck. We deal with favor and grace because we understand that if God is yeah, in charge of our life, if God loves us so much, then I don't have to deal with luck. That's why the songwriter wrote the song, said, I'm not lucky, I'm love, because that's what love looks like. Let, 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 I'm, I'm trying not, I'm trying to hold myself tonight. The favor of God, y'all stay with me, can be described as a divine kindness mm, or an act of true compassion when God loves you. He had true compassion when he allowed his son to die on the cross for you. That's how you knew you was favored by God. Hey. And so, uh, favor of God can be described as divine kindness or act of true compassion on the part of God himself. So, so when God starts yeah, moving things in your life, when God starts, yeah, Blessing you because, you know, the, the blessings of God shall overtake you when God's hand is on your life. It shows not only his compassion, but it shows his divine kindness towards you. So favor of God uh, is true compassion on the part of God himself towards uh, need and undeserving human recipient. So in other words, like I just told you a minute ago, favor looks like grace. <laughs> ah, Y'all gonna help me tonight. So, so we can define favor and grace as God giving us the ability to do something which is humanly impossible for us to do. So whenever you are able to achieve something, that's the favor of God on your life. Whenever you are able to buy a house, buy a car, get on a job and, and excel in the job that you own, the promotion that comes down to you, that's the favor of God on your life. Hey, we bless your name, God. Okay, let me, let me show you what favor looks like. Let's go to Acts again. I mean, Ephesians, I'm sorry. Ephesians chapter 2. Jesus, bless us tonight. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Let's, let, let's go there. Oh, God, I, I'm in, I need the message Bible. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all give me one second. 
Ephesians, because I read that tonight, and that 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 blew my mind almost. Looking at Ephesians chapter two, chapter two. There we go. Uh, verse eight and nine. Y'all, give me one second. Y'all, stay with me. Stay with me. Don't go nowhere. Stay with me. Watch this. It says, uh, watch this. I'm going to read verse 7 because in, in the message, you know, sometimes you can't decipher what's, what verse from the next. But it says, now God has us where he wants us with all the time in the world and the next to shower grace and kindness upon us in Christ. Y'all see that? He has us. So in other words, where you are right now is exactly what God wants you to be. I, I know sometimes it does not feel like I'm in the place that God wants me. It, it doesn't feel like God is blessing me where I am. Sometimes I feel like I ought to be on a higher level, receiving greater gifts from God. But it says right here, now God has us right where he wants us with all the time in the world and the next to shower grace and kindness upon us. Okay, watch this him. Saving is all his idea. Stay with me. And all his work. All we do is trust him enough to let him do it. So in other words, watch this. When God saved us, that was his favor on our life. So it says here, it is God's gift from start to finish. Watch this. We don't play a major role. If we did, we'd probably go around bragging that we've done the whole thing. So in other words, God saves us. And by him saving us, it shows his favor. Eternal life. That's what I'm trying to get you to get. Is an example of God's favor. Because you have eternal life. The Bible lets us know that uh, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That is the favor. Now watch this here. I want to show you something. When God delights in you, that's when you see God's favor or God demonstrate his favor. Let's go to some. And then, then, then I'm going to, going to quickly move towards something. Psalms 18. Y'all stay with me. Don't turn me off. Stay with me. I'm moving towards something. Psalms 18. Psalms 18. Let's go there. Watch this. Psalms 18. Let's go to verse. I want to go to verse 19. Now, the psalmist has been going through hell. But in verse 19, he describes what God has done for him. In spite of all his calamities. Verse 18, I'm going to back up 18. 18 said, they confronted me in my day of calamity, but the Lord helped me. Verse 19, stay with me. He brought me out into a wide open place. He delivered me because, watch this. He was pleased with me. That's the New English translation says that. So when God is pleased with you, God, in fact, will step in and show that you are one of his favored sons of daughters. Watch him. Favor. Stay with me. Write it down. Favor is demonstrated delight. That's what favor is. It's demonstrated delight. So when God is delighted with you, when God is delighted with your life, he shows his favor over your life. That's why, that's why your enemy is mad at you because the Bible said when a, when a man's ways are pleasing to God, he makes even your enemy be at peace with you. The favor of God can be described as tangible evidence. Watch this. That a person has the approval of God. <laughs> Y'all getting this? Oh, God, this is good. When your life is pleasing to God, there is tangible F. That means that God puts things, puts you on, the, on display. He shows you off as his gift. 
Okay. How many of us have had something and because it was one of our favorite gifts, we showed it off. We went to work. This is what my grandbaby gave me. This, this, this is what my husband bought me. This is what my wife bought for me. This is what my kids bought for me. Y'all see where I'm going? God puts you on this play. Amen. <laughs> okay. All right. Let, 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 let's move. There are really 10 people that showed that God showed favor over their life. And I'm just going to deal with five tonight because I don't have that kind of time tonight. But I'm going to deal with five. The first one was Enoch in Genesis 5. Let's go there. Let's go there real quick. Genesis 5, 22 and 23. Let's go there. I'm, I'm trying to look at something else on my way there. Let's go there. All right. Genesis 22. I mean, five. I'm sorry. Five and 22 through 24. Let's go there. Let's get there. Okay. Watch this. After he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked with God. Watch this. 300 years. <laughs> Y'all see that? Now, imagine you've been walking with God on a daily basis for 300 years. 300 years you've been walking with God. And he had other sons and daughters. The entire lifetime of Enoch was 365 years. Verse 24, don't miss it. Enoch walked with God and then he disappeared because God took him Away. Now, 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 I need y'all to stay with me because watch this. Enoch walked with God 300 years. And God, can y'all imagine, the, imagine the, the conversations that God and Enoch had? And watch this because I don't want you to miss this because this is how you ought to be in your journey with God. Can you imagine that God must have longed for Enoch's presence so much that he took him home to heaven rather than leaving Enoch to die a natural death. God loved him that much because of the favor he had placed on. Whenever we get in a close relationship with God, God delights in your life and you see the favor of God over your life. So the first one is Enoch. The second one I want you to look at is Abraham. Here it is, Abraham with his family and God tells him, I need you to move away. Need you to go to a place uh, that I'll show you. Move away from everything that you know, everything that you're used to, everything that's common to you. I, I got another place for you to go. Amen, somebody. Have God ever instructed you to go somewhere that was unfamiliar to you? And here it is, Abraham. Watch this. Let's go to Hebrews 11, 11 and 8. Oh, God, I bless you. I need you to get this tonight. We're talking about the favor of God. Hebrews 11. 11 and 8. Watch this. It says in 11 and 8. For by faith Abraham obeyed. And when he was called to go out to a place. He would later receive as an inheritance. He went without understanding where he was going. Uh, he, he was obedient in spite of. And because of that. The favor of God was over his life. Verse 6 said it best because he lets us know without faith it's impossible to please him for the one who approaches God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder to those who seek him. Amen. So here it is. Let's go to James. James 2, 23. Let's go there. Watch this. James chapter 2, verse 23 says, and the scripture was fulfilled that says, now Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness and he was called God's friend. So the closer you get to God, the more blessings that you'll see on your life. Oh God, I wish I had somebody. God will favor you. Third person tonight, I'm trying to move y'all, is Joseph. Y'all know Joseph. Joseph was one that... that uh, 
God gave him a vision of what he was going to become. And, and the road did not look the way that Joseph thought. Y'all, y'all know how it is. Sometimes uh as a kid, uh uh you 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 get you I, I remember as a kid going to school and uh they would give us seeds to plant to grow trees in our yard. And and sometimes when you get the seed, the seed uh does not represent, yeah, the final or it does not look like what the final results will be. And a tree does not know what it's going to go through in order to reach its plateau. The same thing with us. Sometimes God does not give us, yeah, he does not give us the information that we need, but he only wants us to trust him through the assignment. And so here it is, Joseph. Joseph is sold. He's lied on. He's been pushed into a well. And out of all of that, the Bible said, and God was with Joseph. In fact, uh, the man that he was working for saw God's hand on his life, understood the favor that he had. When God chooses you for an assignment, he will also put favor on your life. And so it is in Genesis 50 and 20. Watch this. Genesis 50 and verse 20, I mean, yeah, verse 20 says it like this. Y'all stay with me. 15 and 20 said, as for you, you meant to harm me, but God intended it for a good purpose so he could preserve the lives of many people as you see today. God will allow you to go through, but he'll keep his hand on you. Fourth person I want to talk about is Moses. Moses, one who had a stuttering problem. One who, uh, yeah, God chose him as his leader to lead his children out of captivity. Here it is in Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah lets us know what favor looks like. Isaiah 66 and 2 says this. Watch this. He said, my hand made them. That is how they came to be, says the Lord. I show special favor to the humble. That's why the Bible said, if you humble yourself under my mighty hand, I will exhort you in due season. I will show favor to the humble and the contrite. Contrite, when you look it up, it talks about those who have a repentive heart. That's why the Bible says he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all our unrighteousness. And it says, who respect what I have to say. I will show favor to the humble, those who are not arrogant and contrite and who respect what I have to say. I will show favor, special favor, he says. Amen. So Moses because he listened to God. God blessed him. Amen. Not only as a leader, God blessed his, his life. Watch this. Let's, let, let's, let's look at Numbers. Numbers 12 and 1. Let's go. Stay with me. Don't leave me. Please don't leave me. Numbers 12 and 3 says this. Now the man Moses was very humble. More so than any man on the face of it. That's why God chose him. Because he was humble. And so because he was humble, God gave him special favor. How many of you tonight are humble enough that God can give you special favor on your life? Amen, somebody. It's a good, good question. Let's look at, let's look at, let's look at what favor looks like on Moses' life. Let's go to Exodus. Exodus 33, real quick. Moses is my fourth one. I got one more and then I'm going to let you go. Let's go 33 and 17. Exodus 33 and 17, watch this. The Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing also that you have requested for you have found favor in my sight. So in other words, when you find favor in in God's sight, there's no limit to what you can ask of God. And God will, in fact, 
bless your request. You have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. How many tonight know that God knows your name? And as long as you have found favor in his sight, there is no limit on what God will do for you. Amen, somebody. In, in, in fact, uh, let's, let's look at Romans chapter 9. Let's go, to, let's go to New Testament. Romans chapter 9 says it like this. Y'all stay with me. Romans chapter 9, verse 15 says, For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have. So in other words, God is letting us know that, watch this, I choose whomever I want to have favor on their life. So then verse 16 says, It does not depend on human desire or exertion. But it's on God who shows mercy. Ain't nothing you can do to obtain God's mercy. God places mercy on whomever he wants. That's why he sent his son. So the Bible said that his mercies are renewed daily. Then in verse 18, y'all stay with me. So then God has mercy on whom he chooses to have mercy. And he hardens whom he chooses to harden. But verse 19 said... You will say to me then, why does he still find fault? For who has ever resisted his will? Verse 18 was really where I wanted to stop at. So in other words, God shows mercy to whomever he wants. So in other words, God can extend his favor to whomever he desires. So my last one, my last person tonight, Sister Williams is David. Hmm. Y'all stay with me. The psalmist wrote songs of devotion by uh, devotions to God. He poured out his heart to God because of the time he spent in sweet devotion with his Lord. Watch this. He cultivated the kind of faith and loyalty to God. Now, I looked up the word cultivate because that is a farmer's word. And cultivate means to prepare or to improve by labor. In other words, it means to grow. So in other words, he was growing his relationship with God. So David became Israel's greatest king because of his heart to please the Lord. Now, now I know all of us, Know the story about Bathsheba. And, and David fell when it came to Bathsheba. David sinned against God. But watch this. Because God still gave David the enduring legacy as uh, a man after God's heart. When you look at Acts 13 verse 22, you still see the favor of God on David's life. Even though he failed, David knew how to get back into God's good graces. And all I'm trying to tell you tonight is that God chooses whom he wants to bless. And so all it takes of us to do is delight our lives before God. And God's hand will be on our life. You don't have to be envious of someone else. Try to figure out how they got what they got. Just know, if a man's life is pleasing to God, God will make even his, his inner be at peace with him. God will pour out his, his blessings on their life. And it's something that I looked at earlier. The psalmist says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So in other words, God sends us as he draws us to him in the direction of his blessings. Amen, somebody. There was a scripture that uh, I had wrote down because a lot of times we look at people who do not necessarily, uh, everybody that prosper does not mean that God's favor is on their life, especially when they're not 
connected to God. God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. He allows blessings to fall, but it's not the same kind of blessing that falls on his children. Amen. I believe it's Second Chronicles that I'm looking for, but I'm going to go to Second Corinthians first to make sure. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse four talks about the fact that just because you got favor on your life does not mean you won't endure hardship, does not mean you won't go through anything. Uh, but it, 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 but it, what it means is God will bring you out of what you're in. Let's read it because since I'm here, let's read it. It says, but God, but as God's servant, all of us are servants of God. We have, we have commended ourselves in every way. That means that we have, we have made sure that we, uh, we follow God's word with great endurance and persecution in difficulty and distress in beatings in prison and riots and troubles in sleepless nights and hunger. In other words, you're going to go through all of this. You're going to go through a lot as a follower of Christ, but God still is in control. Amen. As his servant, you're going to go through a lot of stuff and you already have some of us, more so than others. But God's hand of grace and mercy is on our life. And God's favor is still on your life. Let me look at this last scripture. Make sure this is what I'm looking for. Second Chronicles. Go there with me real quick and then I'm going to let you go. I've held you long, much too long. Second Chronicles chapter 16. Second Chronicles chapter 16. Verse number 9 says this here. Verse 9 says, Certainly the Lord watches the whole earth carefully. I'm reading New English translation. And is ready to strengthen those who are devoted to him. You have acted foolishly in this matter. For now on you will have war. That's not the, the scripture I'm looking for. But <clears throat> the A part I want you to hold on to. Certainly the Lord watches over the whole earth carefully. And is ready to strengthen those who are devoted to him. God will give you everything you need. In your times of storm. Amen. Uh, the favor of God. Amen. All of us have the favor of God over our lives. We wouldn't be where we are right now if God hadn't favored us. And I thank God for his favor. And you ought to be grateful for God's favor because uh, many of us have things that we would not have if we was counting on our credit score. Our educational level. We are in places that people thought we would never be. But because God is the one orchestrating our life, ordaining things for us, the favor of God has shown up time and time again. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask to think according to his riches, according to the power that worketh in us. Amen. Uh, and so we are grateful tonight. Amen. Look, thank God for this opportunity. Amen to just share this word, the favor of God. Amen. Look, let's have a quick word of prayer. Let's remember, Sister Martin came home. I got a chance to see her last Wednesday. I got a chance to go by and see Sister Cassandra uh, Jones as well. Um, uh, Sister Sandra Jones is in great spirit. Sister Martin is doing well. I got a call today that she is back home. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's continue to pray for our sick and sick and shut in. Amen. Uh, let's remember those. Amen. Uh, as we are moving to our family season, uh, uh, November, and December are family. I consider them family seasons because Thanksgiving and Christmas are big family time. And let's remember to also remain safe. We are not out of the covers when it comes to COVID. So make sure that you are uh, cognizant of where you are, who you're around, and all of that. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer, and we're going to dismiss. Father, we bless you tonight. God, we thank you. God, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for clarity and understanding. God, we thank you, God, that even though you may not have favorites, uh, you have those that you favored. <laughs> And so, God, we thank you that you have poured out blessings over our life that we have not had room enough to receive. And, God, we thank you that 
uh, that we've discovered, God, as long as we delight our life in you, uh, God, that, we, that there's no limits to how you will bless us. God, we thank you, God, for your son, uh, because you showed us, God, your favor when you allowed your son to die in our place. Father, we thank you for the salvation that we have today. And we are assured, God, that our uh, names are written in your book of life. God, and because of that, we are favored, God. Lord, we just want to tell you thank you tonight. God, we thank you for all of our sick and shut-in members. God, those are, uh, that are family members. God, those who are distant cousins, friends. Father, we thank you tonight even for those that may be enemies of us that we don't even know. God, we pray tonight, God, that you will seek, heal, set free, and deliver, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, you're no short of your word, and God, we thank you tonight. God, we love you because you first loved us. And God, we just ask tonight, God, that you would have thine own way. Father, meet us, Father, on Saturday morning, Father, in our Sunday school hour. God, pour your spirit out on us. And then meet us again on Sunday morning, God, in our morning worship. And have thine own way, God. Father, we give you glory in advance, God. We praise you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name that we declare victory. And all of the people said, amen, amen. Look, I love you. I love you. And there is nothing that you can do about it. Amen. Go in peace. God bless you.